Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Yep, it's another challenge piece. The Brigade over in my online community voted for the theme Vintage Ghosts. So don't forget to stick around to the end of the video to see their pieces based on this mood board I put together. As always, I usually have a big grand cake planned and then when it comes to the deadline, work gets in the way and we end up with something much quicker and smaller. So here I have this slice of cake that I'd sitting around in the freezer. It's a cookies and cream and just two layers of cake with buttercream in the middle. And I'm going to turn this into a mini bento cake. Bento cakes are really small cakes, usually designed just to feed a couple of people. And they're more traditionally around four inch round, but I'm not wanting to waste this slab that I have, so I'm making mine five inch. I'm just popping that five inch board on top to use as a guide to cut it into somewhat of a circle. Whilst that's sticking itself down, we're going to make a cute little topper. I've just rolled out some white paste and I'm cutting around my five inch board so I can see how big I need it to be. Now I'm going in completely freehand here, but feel free to use a template and trace one from the internet, but I'm just cutting out a little ghost shape. I'm then rolling a piece of sugar paste to create a little hand at the back. and then just tweaking that little headpiece how I want it. Now we're gonna go a little bit cheeky with this ghost. We are only working with a little five inch cake, so we need to jazz it up somehow. So here I'm just drawing on a little butt cheek with my black food coloring. Everything I use will be linked in the description box below. With the same paint, I'm drawing on the eyes, the eyebrows and the mouth before switching to a pink for the little bashful cheeks. I've also added his second arm out there in the front, so it looks like he's kind of peeking over behind him to show his little bum. Now for the buttercream, I've just got some here in my bowl, which I've coloured with the sea green rainbow dust gel. Now this deepens on setting because by the time I'd taken this home and got up the next morning, it was a much deeper colour. My buttercream recipe is also linked in the description box. Here I'm adding my first layer, just coating the whole cake and filling any gaps towards the bottom and the board, just creating a little blue cake. I'm using the smoother just for straightening the sides really, not to actually smooth it at this stage. Once we've got that on, I'm gonna leave that to set a little and then add my second layer. I'm just pushing those top excess pieces of buttercream onto the top of the cake because I know I'm going to have a border on there and it's going to cover it all up. We're going to place our little ghost in the center and then I'm using this tip which is a 5FT, kind of a large open star tip. And I'm placing my bag in the little handy piping bag holder. For years and years, I've always just used a cup or a jug because it does exactly the same thing. But I do have to admit, I do like my little piping bag holder now. I've just filled the bag up and I'm squeezing the buttercream down to the bottom and giving the bag a twist. As you've probably gathered if you watch my channel a lot, I am more of a sugar paste decorator and not so much buttercream, but I do give it a go now and again. What I'm doing here is squeezing and then taking the pressure off as I sweep the tail out of that shell. So you want to kind of push a big blob out and just as you sweep downwards to create that point, you want to ease off the pressure. And then you're going to cover that point with your next large blob. You just want to work your way around the top and then I'm going around again at the bottom. In hindsight, I should have probably started the shell border at the back instead of the front, and that is just a massive rookie error. But once I've finished with that color, I'm now going in with a small, more closed star tip. And this is a deep burnt orange color. I'm using less of this here, but I just used a regular orange and brown gel mixed together. Then I'm going in on the inside, creating a much smaller border, but going in the same direction as the first one. You kind of have to angle your piping bag here to get in the gap. I just love this colour combo, as it's not a one I see a lot of. I then fixed my mistake and started the border more towards the back of this one. 
the idea is the same in that you use less pressure as you tail off towards that point. And that's it, I don't want to add too much decoration as the point of a bento cake is that it's small and shared between a few people and you don't want buttercream overkill. I've now just got some autumn themed sprinkles which are just some leaves and I'm hand picking out the red, orange and bronze ones to match the vibe of the colour scheme. And this is the result. I told you it was a quick one, but it's really handy to use as a gift if you have a little bit of cake left over in the freezer like I did. As my usual cakes are four layers of cake high with three layers of filling. However, these bento cakes are much smaller and only two layers of cake with one layer of filling. I think it turned out really super cute and I love the cheeky little ghost in the middle. Let me know what you think below and don't forget to stick around now to see all the Brigadier's pieces based on the vintage ghost and how they interpreted the mood board that I put together. Together. I couldn't wait to see what they were going to make. Please vote for your favourites in the comments below as they do win a little prize and if you want to join us for the next one we are currently voting for the next theme and we'd love to have you. All the links are in the description box. Thanks guys, see you next time.